and welcome to a wonderful series of episodes of the Smart Life Podcast, where we delve into the captivating journeys of remarkable female founders. I'm Jess Hadley, MD and founder of Beacon Agency, and I'm joined by my co-host Laura Bull, Head of Strategy at Beacon. Together, we are particularly excited to guide you through this series as we uncover their inspiring stories, exploring the highs and lows of setting up and businesses. In each episode, we will dive deep into the personal and professional lives of these incredible women, shedding light on their motivations, challenges and triumphs. We are excited to hear such a truly inspiring journey over the next few hours as we share insights and wisdom that can help aspiring entrepreneurs and established business owners alike. Today, we are excited to have Louise Ralphs with us. Louise is a creative mastermind behind Lou Paper, a creative studio offering custom wedding stationery for your special day, handmade with love in Berkshire. Lou Paper's mission is to create truly beautiful and personalized stationery to match the unique style of your big day. Welcome to the podcast, Louise. Hi, thanks so much for having me. So we're super curious to know about the origins of your passion for illustration. Has illustration always been a passion for you or was it something you came to unexpectedly? So yeah, I uh, did a degree in graphic design, so I I paid for this (laughs) one. So yeah, it's definitely always been something I love. And um, after uni, I decided to try and, you know, mess up my job like we all do. Let's use the use the degree is successful. But I went through a few different things, I ended up like doing fashion buying and then coming into marketing. So yeah, I went kind of full circle and then broke free and quit. And now I get to call my hobby my job, which is amazing. So it's definitely lovely to be able to be creative and get paid for it. So yeah, it's, it's all good. So the university paid off and I can now connect. <laughs> and you came back round to it, which is amazing. That's quite like a career journey point. Yeah. So what was it like? Start with the fashion buying. What was that like? How did you sort of fall into that? Or was it just... <laughs> I feel like when we, we when I first uni, there was like just a lot of, a lot of us trying to find a lot of jobs. And yeah. we did some placements, like design size, and then just, was just try to find and it you know and in and i backed for office shoes in buying it was really fun it was really really fun and like it was in london and like that's when you want to be when you know fresh fresh out of uni um when it was cutthroat and like it was very fashion like very intense lots of women um and i just got sick of commute i went traveling and i came back and I went back to office and then was like, I need to find something more local. I'm sick of, sick of this life of just living on a train. So then I joined a local agency and then on black client side. So I sacked off doing anything to really do. Because it just, I found it like quite like restrained. And I was like, this is yeah. just restrained. And I just like people. And being high outside was really fun. So I was at that agency and then I came to volume, which is where we all met. Where are you all at? Yeah. And again, it was quite outside. Uh, and then I went part time. Then I was doing like the buddies on the side, like you all do, you know, be a side hustle and just, you know, Liz breeze, work all the time. Uh, and then I went, uh, I got married and then I went uh, full time. So I quit the job completely, which was amazing, but it's scary. So as you just said, we actually all met at the same agency and you were once in the wonderful world of marketing for a while how did you come to make the leap to start the business around your biggest passion so i mean well you know getting a job it really like teaches you the way the world works and how to work with people and just gives you the skills to you know like seeing a business how it's run while you're working for it because you know tools to go here can bring us into like my own life and my own business I think, you know, obviously marketing means to be creative and it's really nice, you know, to bring out certain things, even though I wasn't designing myself with more class size, but it's just nice to be involved in, you know, briefs and strategy and all that kind of thing. That is really, really creative. So it's almost like you just stay it right down when you're working for yourself. And um, it kind of just gives you the like tools to see how the world works and how to run a business. Um, and then I think I just realised I wanted to be my own boss. As much as I have lovely, lovely managers um, at volume, I 
just really like the freedom of being on my own. I'm just pushing and the, you know, wacky for us and the money being in my pocket rather than someone else's. So yeah, it, it was tough. Um, and when I was working part time, you know, I was working at volume and then I'd be going to and doing my wedding stuff and then on the days off, be doing more own stuff. So it was like trying to build up a business to like a full time level in part time hours. So it was intense, but you know, when you're doing your own slash hustle, it's it is all about the fact that you are passionate about it and that it doesn't feel like work kind of thing. So yeah, it was I mean we had loads of fun and like I think that's one thing working for myself now is to like I miss the camaraderie of having colleagues. And like you know, I guess it's different now because it's post COVID. But like when you're all in the office and you just come in on a Monday and be like, How's your weekend guys? I'm like, just all that chat I get not good. So I'm just like, <laughs> Oh my god. And that's fine, like, because I just get on and I work and I work hard. But it is lonely sometimes. And I think that's why like a self employed people you have to have a network of like mm. suppliers and just industry friends. So I think as a in the wedding world, it's very incestuous. Everyone knows everyone, so then you can't add mouth because it just gets bad crap. But it's lovely because generally, like everyone is so homely, so it's a really nice community of people. Everyone is competition, but it's it doesn't feel like now, and it's just being the people that get the highs and the lows of the industry. And and you know, it's you need a sounding board. And for me, it's not my colleague; it's my supplier network and community pals so yeah it's crazy it's, it's fun it's all good what you sort of said has sort of really resonated with me in terms of i mean making that leap and yeah. you know, having a side hustle that you're so passionate about you never envisioned doing this so this 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 kind of happened out of the yeah. in a very short space of time but did you always feel for a long time that your ultimate goal was to work for yourself I don't think I came out of uni. I was like, oh, yeah, I've got to run my own business. But I do think, in hindsight, it's only a tangent. There is so little education of how to run my own business and how to be a freelancer. Even in yeah. my degree, which, you know, I'd say like 50% of the people end up be freelance, there's mm. so little like guidance about how to run a business and like just doing your accounts and all that stuff that's a completely different topic um, but yeah I don't I don't I didn't really see it happening I think I'm just passionate about it and I've got good drive and I just thought you know I get my, a lot of my mentality is like what's the worst that can happen so I quit my job if it all goes to pop I'll just go get another job like it's, it is that you got to be positive about it um but yeah it kind of just it happened quite naturally like I was I wrote my kids a few calls I just about to like been at the weekend and I was like oh this is fun and then I was like oh I'm just gonna do some friends wedding stuff and then friends of friends and then friends of friends of friends and then people I didn't even know and then I was like okay I could do this so it just kind of spirals like quite naturally but I think it's really exciting and like I think it's, it makes it an easier transition. It's always sense. Well, I'm being right on the wrong end. Is this like what I'm going to do? I think so. I think absolutely because it's sort of, I don't know, from my experience, you, you get two things. You absolutely you're falling into it and sort of, okay, this is where it's going kind of thing. Yeah. It happens so organically that it is a bit of an easier transition because you've not yeah. massively thought about big leap. You're not sort of broadcasting it everywhere and then yeah. dealing with that kind of, I, I don't know if you found this though that as you get bigger or as you do your thing and you're on your own and in those first few bits it's it sometimes also then has the opposite effect where you feel a little bit like an imposter sometimes because you're like um, this is comes out of nowhere and you're like all the entrepreneurs you know people you see on television that are self-employed or entrepreneurs yeah. and things like that don't look like me and don't behave like <laughs> me and it's really weird like do you know what I mean you're like I think I think as um, I still get imposter syndrome and I get it now a bit more because I've got children and I am a bit older and then all these like, fresh, new, young things are coming on. I'm like, oh my God, like I just feel so completely, so completely different to them. And you've just got to value what you do and, you know, with age comes knowledge and that's power and, you know, yeah. whatever. But 
it is it's scary like it is scary but then you're like on a flip side you'll have people like message and be like oh i want to like, learn from you and you're like what i'm just doing my thing so it, it is it's like it's really nice when people are like that and people are like oh i've been following you for ages and i'm really inspired and that kind of thing so it's, it's a real like there's so many different things you have to do in your own you know your own business and certainly hats to wear so it is wild but it's great what i'd be really interested to know is what your biggest challenges have been so you sort of mentioned that and i totally agree isn't it in the early stages and nobody teaches you how to run a business or be freelance and that's the biggest like steep learning curve but have you found that it's changed over the years that you get different challenges the the biggest challenge is that everything is on me i had this discussion literally yesterday with my sister-in-law who is also self-employed and she's having a break over the summer because she's just like it's too intense and it's like still even though i've been in had my business for is every time someone emails me say they've got their stationery, I still have the fear that they're going to match and I get all of something wrong. And that's my instant, like, jerk reaction. And I'm like, why? Like, why do I do this to myself? But you do, because there's no one else to pick up the pieces. And, like, it's intense. And, like, you know, I don't really have time off. Because there's no one to answer my emails. And there's no one to answer those brides. So... Holiday for me is just like chill time where I'm not like physically doing work, but I still have emails to attend to and like questions to answer. I'm like way more relaxed by it. And like I do bite my switch off, uh, but that's that's on me. So, you know, that's absolutely fine. And like I think you need a really good support. So either from your family, from your friends. I think a lot of people don't really understand what it's like to find a sense. So you'll get your friends be like, it seems fun, like doing a hobby for a job and blah blah blah. They're like, yeah, but actually, I'm doing like my accounts and doing my marketing and doing this and this and this. And so it's intense. So I think the biggest challenge is just trying to stay positive and having a good mindset mm. and not having a breakdown. <laughs> I think it's just so good, you know. It's Absolutely relate because even and I've got a wonderful team, so I do get a bit more of a break than possibly the ed or and so does laura but there's an element there that the buck always stops with me and i always feel inherently responsible for mm-hmm. everything and you know what you were saying about worrying about oh i hope they like what we're doing yeah <laughs> still happens and and it's really really tricky it's and it's me as well being bad at switching switching off i hope you don't mind me asking because i i'm just really intrigued what was your maternity leave like because yeah, I'm not an <laughs> I was just interested. I mean, like, I mean, I had, I was, I, it was soft touch. So I was very lucky. Yeah. Um, but for you, it must be really hard being self employed when it's just you. As like a self employed person, the maternity pay is awful. Um, so there was that, that as an initial thing that was like financially, it was just dire. Um, so I had a lady who, who worked at Volume, Carolyn. So I got in touch with her because, again, it's like you never know who you're going to need in the future. So it's always mm-hmm. good to network and know people. So I knew mean, Karen was amazing at Volume. Um, mm-hmm. And like, she was super on it. I'd kept in touch with her and I just said, Could you like handle my emails for a few months? So she um, did my emails for like two, three months. And then I started back on my emails when the boys were three months. I didn't have any weddings booked in until like the summer. So that was way easier to manage. Like I said, no to all the weddings from like, I don't know, January to August. Um, and then I started with a few weddings, so ease back in. But, you know, it was really nice to have time away from like this crazy newborn bubble of wildness and like using my brain i love what i do i'm like it's Aww. such a nice environment to be in because generally everyone's super happy that they're getting married and they're lovely people to work with so it was like the but it was wild but i wouldn't have changed what how you know how i did it and i didn't like i don't feel like i missed out on anything with both the boys and now i work part-time so you know i get that nice balance of long time and work time so it is really good, but yeah, my turn to leave. That's that Like you said, it is so hard 
running a business but what are the things that you enjoy most being my own boss <laughs> I'm not having anyone else to answer to I think that's like a massive thing for me and like now you know post covid um but there were no weddings and it was scary and I was just like I just don't think I could go and get a job again because I just love working for me and like not having an answer to and just having freedom of working as hard as I need to and then having the time off that I need to so that is the whole massive upside of like running your own business is that it's very very flexible and that's lovely so like if I need to take the boys somewhere or if I need to tap some time off to do this or this then it's wonderful and the fact that my job is my hobby I'll call it is lovely because I'm just doing what I love every day and getting paid for it so that is like hugely rewarding and I think it makes me work harder and it makes me feel like I'm not doing a job if that makes sense like I don't crack that like oh I feel like I'm just doing work so I just go do this design so it is really fun yeah less like getting up for work every time no Sunday night dread oh no 100% I don't think Sunday night dread because I'm already working <laughs> yeah true <laughs> I love hey, what, is there any so in terms of that sort of like getting to do that kind of hobby yourself is it have you had to like develop new hobbies so that you've got, you've got something outside of it or is it that <laughs> it just becomes all encompassing because i'm really intrigued because it's it's sometimes a bit tricky when you change yeah, a hobby no, into okay. a job because you're like well okay what, what's mine what what do you what do, do to relax do, and yeah. chill so i've i have recently this is again like the new mom like try and find your feet in business and like i do need to find something that is just for me to like wind down and chill but obviously you know there's very few hours in the day but one of my goals was to learn a new craft and like I've bought something but I haven't actually done it yet but I will by the end of the year because it's my belt I'm a six my dolls um but I think it's just trying to carve out some time so like I'll go to the gym uh when I can and just having some time away from the business and we had a cabin built in the garden so I can shut the door and I just walk away from it. And I think that's really, really important. It's just to have some time for you. But yeah, I my you know, I I I've learnt to just do my whole best in my job. But I read and I love reading and that's not like thing I just switch off. So that's what I do. <laughs> Recent that's really good. Cause it is it's really like you say, it's really tough to find time. Cause because the especially when you've got children as well, like the business is your other baby so you've got like okay. multiple babies and having to deal with you know all of that it's really difficult because you want to give them all of your time as well and sometimes <laughs> it's really tricky I'm really intrigued by you saying so obviously that's your goal with your thing how do you with your business and your past life how do you set goals and when do you do it is it something you do very regularly or annually or is it that you sort of every so often go I feel like we need a new change of direction so what's your approach to sort of setting your own goals for your business so this year was the first year I've actually like written goals down. I have like things in my mind, but this year me and my husband both sat down and we had like personal goals, like individual goals, like goals of value, uh, and then like my business goals. And we stuck them on a fridge and I think it's like so good because they're written down and I'm like, oh, God, Jim, we used to do that. Or, oh, Jim, we said we do that. So it was tricky for me because it's like my first year class my part-time so I'm setting goals I don't really know how much I'm going to do so my goals that I set are just completely ridiculous and yeah. in hindsight but at the time I'll let's do that I can do that many weddings um but you know realization of like I can't do that many weddings so my goals are too much but that's okay um but I recently sat down with my I call her my she's not her VA so she writes my blogs and like she's amazing she's from a, a marketing background as well so I did a strategy meeting with her and we just identified loads of different parts of the business and like what to work on and like we allotted them on like low cost high end cost and like how much money to open business and that was like a massive thing and again as a self-employed person getting someone outside of the business to kind of help 
was invaluable. And like, because she was kind of picking out areas because she knows me and she knows fun as business works, but she's a complete like separate entity. Uh, and that was really, really interesting. So I think that's going to become a like regular thing that I do with her, like quarterly and then like a one in the first part of the year and then like a evaluation one. So yeah, I think it's definitely good to have some kind of goal like to work towards. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I'll just do this and then it comes end of the week and end of the year. And then you're like, oh, I don't really know. Like, how I got here or what I did or anything. So it's it's definitely like this year I've kind of booked it and been like, right, I'm going to actually like write this down and have some concrete stuff. Because before I was like, I want to hit this and I'm already going to hit this profit and that'd be right. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Put it yeah, out. I, we, I totally get because it's really difficult because, um, like you say, coming, coming back after having a baby or, you know, we've had because you sort of set up your business not too dissimilar like went full-time not too dissimilar time to us with mm-hmm. Beacon, and it's been an interesting five six, six years in terms of with COVID yes. isn't it yes. Brexit a war in Europe so you know there's a lot of things that have impacted it's, you know it's definitely a time to start a business <laughs> I could give one advice to people starting businesses don't do it through pandemic but um it's we found as well you, you can write a plan and it's really good to have it because yeah like it's like you say having that uh look at your business is really really important but mm-hmm. sometimes you can't be completely wedded to it in the sense that it can change oh, yeah. what i found was really interesting is the goals we had we achieved them all but the way that we achieved them or the route that we took was completely different to what i had written down on the plan so we yeah. got there eventually you talked to obviously you've recently become a mum and coming back what's that transition been like working in a business as a new sort of new mum wild <laughs> very wild just it's a juggle but nice to juggle you know just mm. the treats and dicks it's even more of a juggle so yeah i had the twins um and i didn't like we have fertility issues and it was and very much like to keep my business over the same class or like very very separate so um you wouldn't even know i was just kidding. and i was saying that and i was like so i have twins and now i'm back and i was just like what so yeah it's very much i still like to keep that quite separate i think that for me as well allows like quality family time to be hours and my like, business time to be business time. So it's very much like I don't want to mix that together really. Like it's beginning to take on more and many face behind the brand and like I think it's to an extent of like, yeah, they can know me, but they don't need me to plaster a thing on Instagram and stuff like that. Mm. And I think they've been the journey we went to through to get the twins and very aware of not Bramming that down people's throats in terms of like people are still going through a lot of stuff and um, i had a wedding planner reach out this week who is starting to have facilities she met and it was she messaged me and just was like talking about it so we're very open about the fact that we had trouble and we ended up in love yeah and we're so so lucky to have had the twins from it but yeah it's very like that kind of work and life is very sad. so yeah that for me is like quite important and like the mom guilt is real strong so it is again i get like real like comparison with like all the other new moms i knew who like had nap time and then they i don't know i don't know what could they did because every nap time i worked and i was just like this is just crazy but i've got the work to do and i'm very much like we want a new kitchen, so I'm there work and I'm gonna earn money so we have a new kitchen because then you know the twins will have a house and whatever. So um, it's a juggle, and I think this year is teaching me how much I can do. And like, it's hard when you come back because like you have children, and that is like a massive part of your life, and you can't work all the time. So it's finding the balance, and I'm finding the balance slowly this year. So it's definitely like an experimental year of how much I can work, how many rooms I can really take on. So yeah, it's a long. It, it's a massive juggle, and it's it's always changing because I find it with my son. Um, like you say, it, 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 at different stages, he needs different things, and so mm-hmm. as that 
advances it's really really tricky and so yeah, yeah you, you think you've got it down oh I, I think I've got back into this and I know what I'm doing and then another couple yeah. comes out you're yeah. like okay, you want this now <laughs> cool I won't let me email on my do. phone anymore it's oh. <laughs> sure. no no they are Back of the I had to juggle finding your feet coming back I came back f- five days a week for a little while and then I quickly realized that actually I came back full time and I was like I felt like I was really missing out on yeah the time that all these other people working and like not everyone but some people who could work in part-time and I was like I'm missing this I'm literally getting two days with him nursery see him more than I do and I was that's yeah. when I then went back down to part time, so I could spend that more time with him, and that helped alleviate some of my mum guilt. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, he does spend now more time with me than with other people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a nursery family. But, yeah, oh, but it's cool. Bye. It's really important, I think, because finding that balance. Because actually, it, it, you can't do your job well if you're sitting there missing them. You know, like if you feel exactly. that it's not the right I'm thing, so, so. and yeah it just makes you better or you know you're getting giving your best self at each bit because you've made yeah. it a fit for your family i say to everyone work and makes me a better mum because the time away from them i think is so important because mm. it just gives you time and space to actually think and have a hot drink and like <laughs> be you and not just be mum because i found that so i found that transition like obviously i longed to be a mum for a long time mm. and like I'm so grateful for that, but also I want to still be new, and like yeah. I want to still have that life. And so it's, it is quite nice to have that mix. But yeah, and you never get the time that you don't have the time back with them. And like especially we're like kind of no more kids, thanks a trans owner. So this is it. Like this is the only time we're going to have. You know, like eighteen month old twins or like twelve month old twins. So it's that you might embrace that and yeah. feel like you're not like missing out and they grow up so fast and everyone says this they really do so yeah it's it's the junk on the it is really yeah and it's tough and it and also when you're at work as well like you like the decisions or things that you're doing or the way you're taking your company you're so hyper aware of them and what they need and mm-hmm. and and it's really i find sometimes that you switching between the two it's like okay right i need to switch off mum brain and then i need to switch yeah. off work brain when i'm sitting with jules at another time and i'm thinking about an email that's just popped in but i'm not technically working and it's just yeah really yeah a really tricky transition to sort of make going back in yeah it's hard but you know it's, it's very rewarding would you give any tips to any other sort of mums that are about to, or especially first, like the first time coming back into to work after after having a, ba- a baby? Is there anything you would sort of say, you know, if I could give you one tip, do this? I think one thing is to like really trust whoever's got your children, because if you're not, really, you know, you can't come back to and be worrying about them the whole time. Because it'll just be detrimental to your your job. It'll be detrimental to you'll be you know anxious about them. So I think it's definitely like find somebody that you're happy to turn off to, whether that's nursery or like grandparents or whatever. But it's then you win money about them, and then you're like, right, well, I'm in work. I'm in work zone, and just I know it is hard leaving them. Like the boys went to the trial minor in six months, and I think. It's very different for me because I have twins, so they've got each other. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, they've got each other. That'll be fine. <laughs> but it's very different for us to have one baby because, you know, they're on their own. But it's just finding that, like, trust in whoever's looking after them, that you know that they're fine and you don't have that, like, worry. Like, of course you'll think about them. And I think the lovely thing of it is that, like, you spend the time away from them. So when you see them, like, it's so much better. And like you really appreciate the time more, and it does make you a better mom, a hundred percent. Like I know people like, oh, but you know you can spend more time with your mom. It's a hundred percent makes you a better mom because you appreciate the time with them more. And I think the time away from them allows you to reset. Like if they've been crazy all morning, and you're like, oh my god, like what the heck? And you go to work, and you see them, and you're like, what's the fun? Like reset yourself. So I think it's definitely like. It's not bad going back to work. And, like, it'll allow you to do the things with them that you want to do. So, yeah, it's just like a, you know, it's just routine. Getting that yeah. done routine. 
Okay, um, now we've come to the part of the show where we put our guests in the hot seat with our past their long questions. As part of our series, Interviewing Female Entrepreneurs and Founders, we're about to hit you with a few quick fire questions to get some valuable takeaways for our lovely audience. So, question one. If you have to give fellow founders one piece of advice, what would it be? I think this on the power of saying no is so important as a business owner that you can say no. And it's hard when you're first starting off because you don't want to say no to anything and you just say yes to everything. And it's tricky, but as you kind of progress through the business, say no to anything that doesn't feel right. So you know in your heart what, who your client is and what you want to be doing. And some of them will be like, this is my brief. And that'd be lovely, but you're like, that's so far from what I want to be doing and my ideal client. Um, and you're like, well, I want to say yes because it's X amount of money, but you'll be doing it and you'll regret saying yes. And then you'll not enjoy working on it. And then you'll just, it'll just be a burden for you, but it's, you know, X amount of money, but I'm not enjoying working on it. It is definitely something for like a bit later on in your business journey. Because obviously at the start, you can't let on go in those, all of that because I, you know, don't like them, but you need the money. So it's, it is the kind of thing that you need to have a little edge on, but it is so important to say no, and it's really difficult to do it, but the reward you'll get from them saying yes to the right player is like no end of, you know, because you're doing that. And also your client will say yes to the request you should have said no to. And then your yes client will come along. You'll be like, well, I've said yes to the no person. So I'll dive time for you. So it's tricky, but it's definitely the piece of advice that I'm like, say no. And it's not just saying no to the client. So I don't really write in the email. I don't have any calls with any clients. And that's just like a thing I've never done. And I would say weekly, I have to say no to calls um, because it's just how I work. I don't want to spend my evenings working on calls with clients. It's and nine times out of 10, they work here and we'll just do it on email. I think people think calls are easier, but then in my mind, I'm like, because way more books in my email. And I have got it written down in black and white, what you've said. One, but oh, I said that on the phone. So it is definitely the, the power of saying no in like a grand scheme of things. So just say no. That's my thing. Question two. If you could recommend one book, podcast or online course, what would you choose? So I'm so bad. But like, I then what I've touched on about like personal life and like business life, I keep quite like separate. So I like, don't like listen to most stuff about work. So like my book life is like novels and stuff like that. Like, there's a book called from that book and it's a tall paper worth a minute and it's like travel size it's really small and it's just like full of like really great stuff to like look through and I think I'm more of like driven by like little quotes rather than I'm, I don't want to read a whole book about being a CEO um so I like little tidbits about that kind of thing like again like I can't sit and work and listen to a podcast I have to like I'll be making a half day and realize I'm going to put my music on so I'm very like I really have to like concentrate, so I'm not like I have so many friends that listen to podcasts where I wear them or like have a series on their iPad. I'm like, how are you concentrating? <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm definitely like not great at recommending that kind of thing. But there is that aspect, which is good. You've led me on quite nicely there, Louise. So third and final question: What is your favourite? inspirational quote so, uh, I have a print of it I haven't put it up yet because um, I have a, a new habit but it's she believed she could so she did so I think that was like a really nice encompassing like just inspiring and like I think as a woman in business sits it's tough and like I think our anxiety levels are going through the roof um so it's just kind of coming back down and realizing like you can do this, so do it. But I, I, just, I love it. I love that because yeah, you're right. Because I get no, you have to have like our male counterpart parts overthink as much as I feel like. I mean, yeah, I do or we do. But um, yeah, it's like you can do it. Just get on with it. <laughs> yeah, I do generally think women and men are wired very differently, and I think becoming a parent makes you realise how differently your lives work. Yeah, it's, it is really interesting. 
I've liked so much to like a study of it. <laughs> but what do I think? So yeah, it is. It's good fun, but no, we'll change it. The world in terms of like being a woman in business, and yeah, it's great fun. So do it if you want it. So much fun. And on that, everybody, let's wrap up a fantastic episode of the Smart Life Podcast. We hope that you walk away feeling motivated, inspired, and ready to take on the world. Um, a huge thanks to Louise for sharing her incredible journey with us and offering such valuable insights. Thanks for joining us, Louise. Cheers.